what's up guys and now we are in Japanese garden garden uh, in Helsinki and uh, here we are taking photos this is our second day here I've been taking a lot of photos and video clips it's a very cool place and uh, now after a long while of searching good photos, good compositions in this place uh, I finally found something that I like so I found a very nice tree trunk uh, which, I, which I will really use in the composition but uh, I will show you like uh, a big part of the composition right now so I want that uh, there's a little kid holding um, this branch right here and I like reaching to that and then I'll be using this tree trunk in the back right here uh, for framing this and I believe that this will turn out very good although it is now midday and there's a lot of <laughs> different kind of weather and uh, harsh light at times so so we'll see how it turns out hopefully good but um but uh, yeah i may i will make the absolute best out of the out of the photo right now all right i believe that uh, the photo came out very good i still have to see in post and uh, i will give some <laughs> comments of my own uh, right now of the photo So I believe that this photo came out uh, very good. I especially like the depth aspect of this. Uh, as you can see the floor is very close to the camera and uh, and then the main stuff is a bit further away. And this creates this um, depth um, in the photo, this 3D kind of look. Uh, and I'm a big fan of this and I've seen that uh, I do this more and more with my photos. And um, yeah, I really am a big fan of uh, uh, creating depth. And uh, I believe that the three branches really nicely frame. So the the subject so the kid there hold the branch and um, yeah, I believe the colors came out great I did have to do a lot of photoshopping here though I had to remove a lot of people there was like uh, this place was very full as you might might have seen in the clip or will see later but like um, yeah luckily I took many photos and uh, then I stacked them in Photoshop and I could do like um, kind of easily uh, remove the people although it was quite complicated because I took this shot handheld but uh, yeah, I think the photo came out um, very good and uh, I'm very happy with the result. So, how do you actually photograph the cherry blossom? There's many different kind of photos you can take. Kind of like um, three or four themes. And I will, I will now go over them. So, one is a macro photo. So that's a very close up detailed photograph of the cherry blossoms. Um, so yeah, a very close up photo. I don't personally have a macro lens, so I didn't take any cherry blossom macro photos. But I've seen many people take them and they are gorgeous. So if you have a macro lens or some macro extenders for your camera, definitely try, try to take some macro photos when you're photographing cherry blossoms. Then number two is a close up photo of the flowers. And uh, this is not a macro photo, but still kind of a close up just of the flowers themselves. And uh, I took some photos of the flowers because uh, I had a telephoto lens for example but you can also do this with wide angle it doesn't matter really like what kind of lens you have for this just go ahead and uh, take some photos of the flowers themselves and uh, they can turn out very beautifully and then the third different kind of photograph uh, you can take is like a bit of a wider photograph and that uh, this could be for example with some humans in it um, or then maybe an animal in it like a bird in it um, or like something and uh, I took many of these, like this main photo that I showed you in this video, that's like a wider photo that uh, you could take, for example. Um, or then photographs um, like this, or like uh, video clips like this. And uh, yeah, this is like uh, more of like my kind of photography. So if you're like a landscape photographer who doesn't normally do like um, very close-up photos or some portraits, I believe like uh, white photos are for you the way to go because like um, you get to have all of these colors but then you can also like um, have your own style in that photograph so yeah these are the three ways i would go ahead and uh, photograph cherry blossoms um, and uh, yeah i hope um, this helped and uh, how do you then actually get to this place in helsinki where there are these cherry blossom trees because they are not everywhere <laughs> and uh, if you're not from helsinki like i am not from there you can also find it complicated how to get from a to b so how do you get to this place in helsinki i'm gonna go over that right now How do you get to the place where there is cherry blossom trees in Helsinki? First of all, where are the most of the cherry blossom trees? They are in Rohvuoren Kirskapuisto. There's a few ways to get there, either by a car, by underground or by foot. By car, it will take you around 15 minutes, 
put Rohevuren, Kirsikapuisto to your navigator or ask a taxi driver to get you there. I personally recommend getting the other craft because it's cheap, according to Google, 2 euros 80 cents per person. And if you arrive to Helsinki Central Station by train for example, it's very easy to continue from there to Rohevuren, Kirsikapuisto. If you don't arrive by train, you can still start from, the, from there or look for some other options where to start. But how to get from the central station to Rohevuori by the underground? First, you need a ticket. Look for these in the central station, some are outside when you arrive by train and some are a floor below, so take these stairs and you'll find some there as well. You need to go to Hertonimi, that's your stop. So get a ticket that lets you go there. From Hertonim, it's around a 50 minute walk to the park, there are no signs at least at first, so take google maps to help you out. Then by foot of course it takes a long one but it's a good and healthy option nonetheless. Around 1 hour 40 minutes or 8.1 kilometers. And here google maps again comes to your rescue. So those are the ways you can get to Rohborn Kerskapuisto and now a few things I want you to know before getting there. 1. Don't go there when there's an event going on. We went there on two days, on one day it was already busy with people, but it was much less busy than on the other day when there was the event. There was like 35,000 people interested in coming to the event, so if you want photos with those people, then come on some other day. But if you want photos with people and photos of the event, which is very cool, then of course come, from, come when there's the event. 2. For photos, golden hour is the best time to shoot, so if you come at those times, you will get better photos and there will also be less people if you don't want those in your photos. 3. Don't just photograph in the main place of Rohuori. The main place I mean by is the place when you first get there. It's the easiest place to get to and people are really lazy, so it will be most full. So I recommend to go and spot this sign called Japanese Student Putara, which means in Japanese like garden. This place is definitely the least crowded and I also found the best photos there. And the current was really cool as well. So that's how to photograph and where to photograph cherry blossoms in Helsinki. I definitely recommend photographing and seeing overall the cherry blossoms, they're really beautiful. Thank you for watching this and leave a like if you enjoyed this and subscribe for more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next video.